It's Friday, November 2nd, 2012, and let's talk about what happened this week over at XTADevelopers.com. <laughs> First off, device update news. As you know, at this point, lots and lots of devices have their own versions of CyanogenMod 10. There are quite a few official versions in the CyanogenMod 10 repositories. Well, as of this week, you can officially add one more. Thanks to XDA senior member Dasun's Rule 32, the ASUS Transformer TF700 is now officially in the CyanogenMod 10 nightlies. There are definitely still a few issues with it, but the grand majority of things are working pretty well. Things that are not working include the camera, tethering, XFAT support, so you can just use NTFS on your externally mounted things, and Circle Battery Mod, which actually I've never used before, so I might want to look into that at some point. Pretty much everything else is supposed to be working really well though, so if you have the TF700 and you don't have a Jelly Bean ROM on it at this point, it may be worth giving this a look. Now the really big news from this week, Google had some announcements they were going to make on the 29th. They were supposed to have an actual event. As it turns out, due to Hurricane Sandy, that was unfortunately rained out as it were. But they went ahead and made all of their announcements anyway. There were hardware and software announcements. The big hardware announcements involved the release of a bunch of new Nexus devices. We knew about the grand majority of all this before it happened, but just to go ahead and recap, the LG Nexus 4 was officially announced. This is going to be sporting a 1.5 GHz Qualcomm S4 quad-core processor. 2 gigs of RAM, a 4.7 inch 720p display, that's 320 ppi, which is extremely high, and will come in 8 and 16 gig varieties. The 8 gig variety is going to be 299, the 16 is going to be 349. Unfortunately, the one thing that they left out, in my opinion, is LTE, but they did that for good reason. A uh, list of reasons can be found anywhere else on the web. Essentially, it just comes down to wanting to have one unified device and not have to support multiple radios, and the LTE carriers like Verizon uh, don't actually support using just one radio. So it's a bit unfortunate for those of us that are on Verizon, so we'll just have to stick to our Galaxy Nexus for now and maybe find something else moving forward. Additionally, they announced the Nexus 10. It's going to be a 10-inch tablet, but unlike the traditional 10-inch tablets you find, this one's got a ridiculously high resolution. It's sporting a 2560 by 1600 display, built by Samsung and using the Exynos 5 dual-core processor, running at 1.7 gigahertz. A bit interesting to see it's not going to be using a quad-core, but that's simply because the Exynos 5 quad-core has not been released yet. It also comes with 2 gigs of RAM and either 16 or 32 gigs of built-in storage, with pricing being $399 or $499 depending on the amount of storage you want to get. And just to keep things interesting, they also revamped the Nexus 7 line just a little bit. They're doing away with the 8 gig Nexus 7 version. They're moving the 16 gig version from $249 down to $199. And there's now a 32 gig version, which you can see right here. Same device, exactly. It's just got 32 gigs of built-in storage. Same, no SD card slot or anything, but 32 gigs of built-in storage, which is very nice for 249. There's also going to be a 32 gig version with GSM support built in, so you can use it on any of your GSM friendly networks. It's going to be running 299. It's going to be released on November 13th on, I believe, T-Mobile is going to be the first one to get it. One way or another, you can find out more about these devices by seeing all of the forums available for them at xdadevelopers.com or by heading over to the Play Store at play.google.com and clicking on Devices. Now with these new devices, specifically the Nexus 4 and the Nexus 10, 10, they're going to be coming with the brand new, just now released, just now announced at least, version of Android, Android 4.2, which is still being called Jelly Bean. However, they've added a boatload of new features to it. That was the software announcement that they made this week. In terms of new features for 4.2, you have an updated camera app that comes with a Photosphere ability. Not really a new feature by any stretch. I know Microsoft made something similar last year, a couple of years ago. They've been working on that for a while, so Google is just using very similar technologies. But it gives you a nice way to be able to sort of pull out and zoom around. Instead of just doing the traditional panorama, you get the whole 360 and the sphere. It's a ball. They've added gesture-based typing to the keyboard, which is kind of like swipe, like the swipe keyboard was in the past and probably still is. Honestly, was never a big fan of Swipe, but you can actually download that. That's another story. We'll go to, sort of combine them together there. You can download it for your Android 4.0 Plus devices. This is the Motorola Razr HD that I'm testing, and I've actually got that keyboard on there so I can, you know, swipe around and just type in words, and you can't see what I'm typing there, but there's a word. No, there's not. <laughs> Anyway, same sort of idea. Uh, one of the fun things that I like to do with this is just sort of move my finger around like that and see what it types. It didn't type anything. There we go. Dentinol. 
That's a word assuming. Anyway, in addition to that, they've changed the pull down menu yet again. They've got a button in the upper right hand corner of it that does a flip and allows it to go over and give you access to some quick settings like most OEMs have been doing. When you do the pull down bar, you've got the quick settings. This will be in the same sort of place. And instead of just pulling down and hitting the button, you can also do, I think, a two finger pull down, which will automatically flip it over for you. Just another option there. And there's a lot more to 4.2. There's a whole lot of things out there. You can find all of that through the XDA post, which I think leaks over to the Google post as well. But one of the big things in my opinion, especially for tablet users, is multi-user support. And as far as I'm aware, it's only gonna be available for tablets at least in the beginning, but essentially you'll be able to sort of log out as your user, log in as a different user, have maybe your own sets of applications, your own settings, things like that. Very, very handy for families and tablets. And really, that was the big news from this week. I'm sure a lot of other stuff went on, but that was a long part of the video there. However, if you haven't seen it, three videos have been released on XDA TV this week. The first one was filmed at the Big Android Barbecue, and it was a an app review of Hacks Launcher created by R2 Does Inc. And I believe Azrianok actually worked with him on it. So they did the, the review sort of together there. I used Hex Launcher briefly at the barbecue and it was not exactly for me, but I see a lot of potential there. It kind of feels like a desktop environment on top of Android. So it's, it's kind of a, a paradigm shift, I guess. Additionally this week, Adam did another unboxing the XDA way. What did he unbox? the big Android barbecue. He went into some devices that he had, some devices that he received there, the swag that he got, and just his experience in general. And finally, TK put out another app review this week of picture password lock screen. So instead of using a traditional pattern or a face unlock or anything like that, or a pen or you know keyboard combination, you use a picture and you draw a pattern on top of it. It actually kind of looks like an app that would drive me nuts to be quite honest, but it might be something that you're interested in. So if you are, go ahead and take a look at his video and move on from there. I was also reminded earlier that this is XDA's 300th official video, sort of. So what are we going to do for the 300th video? I got nothing. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. Thank you for helping us grow to over 50,000 subscribers on YouTube. And I hope you look forward to seeing at least another 300 videos out of us. As always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that like button down below if you like this video and subscribe if you have not already. But again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on Monday.